I don't know too many people that work harder, are more focused in getting better each and every day than Monica. I really hadn't seen anything like her. A little hard to see the ball. I've never seen somebody throw that hard. She has a competitive spirit to her that is very contagious. When I first heard Monica's million dollar signing contract, I thought it was amazing. Watching how beautiful her wind up and her motion was. Monica Abbott, she's the best in the world. So today's game day. We're playing the UCLA Florida Pride. We play tonight at six, and I'm going to be pitching tonight. And usually on days that I pitch, I'll do kind of like a light little like run or jog, kind of get my body going before the day. Um, you know, our games are at night, so during the day I like to kind of get some sort of workout in. Today, like I mean, I'm not really trying to. <laughs> I don't know, work out hard. I'm just trying to get my body going so I don't pedal. Like it's just, it's an easy kind of like blood flow, break a light sweat. As a kid, I was super athletic and super just outdoors. I loved being outside and playing with my brothers and sisters and all the neighborhood kids. I started playing softball when I was five. I did t-ball and everything. And then I started, I moved to Bobby Sox, Bobby Sox softball uh, when I was about eight years old. And my older sister, Jessica, she played softball and my mom kind of signed both of us up at the same time to play. But Jessica, she was, she was always really good at softball. She was kind of like the star and I was just Jessica's younger sister. Uh, she played shortstop and she was like the number four hitter. She was stronger than everyone else. And she decided that she wanted to be a pitcher. So my mom was like, oh, of course, Jess, you can be a pitcher. We'll take you to a pitching lesson. And they had who they put behind home plate. They put Jessica's sister, me, Monica, um, behind home plate to catch for her. And I was young and she's bigger than me and I was scared of the ball. And all I wanted to do was get out of there as fast as possible because she threw the ball so hard and my hand was hurting. And um, after that lesson, the pitching coach asked me, he said, Monica, have you ever thought about pitching? About two weeks later, I asked my mom, I was like, hey, you remember that coach? He said that I could maybe try pitching. I think I want to try it. My mom kind of laughed at me like, Monica, no, you're not pitching. And so, so then she made like this big laundry list of things to do uh, for me to be able to get a pitching lesson. And it was like everything from mow the lawn, wash the car, vacuum the stairs, clean the bathroom, dish duty for the next week, you know, everything that you could possibly think of that, you know, when you're 12 years old, you don't want to do. You just want to be outside and playing with your friends. But I did every chore that she asked me to and I got that first, first lesson and it was well worth it. It was fun to be out there and do cheers and have snacks and all my friends were there. But once I started pitching, I felt like I kind of found a home. You know, when I first saw her, all I saw were just levers. You know, you're walking to the park and you just see lots of legs and lots of arm. I just remember thinking, if those levers can be put in succession correctly, I wonder how amazing she could be. I mean, you know, everybody knew that she was going to be something special, but you never can guarantee that, right? There's many things that trip up players. When she was in high school, she was so shy, and literally she had to learn to get comfortable being in her own skin. And for somebody that watched from the first row, because our programs would compete, it's been fascinating to watch. It's an inspiring story. They're just like ankle locks, it's nothing. Anything just gives me a little more stability. You know, the less my foot moves on landing, the more power I can extort through my body and my pitch. I don't even know what's happening right now. We sort of just are get in our own zone. Um, we all have different ways of getting ready for the game. We're get, trying to get all of our stuff together before we go out on the field and make sure we have all the right jerseys and stuff. Last night, <laughs> I think I came to a realization I'm too good for you. 
gotta lace them up. This experience means the absolute world to me, honestly. Like, not many people get this opportunity. Getting to go out and do this every single day, honestly, like, it gives me chills every day. Like, I've dreamed of this since I was a little girl. It was a dream of mine to either play in the Olympics or play at the highest level, and so this is the next best thing. It's definitely a blessing to be able to be a part of something like this and be able to play against the best of the best. I feel about the Sharks off of the last time that we played them. Um, just hitting tendencies. Everyone in this league is a good hitter. Like, if you're in the pro league, like, you're pretty much a good hitter. So, it's more so just managing just the more that you can learn a hitter, you know, the better off you are. The same with hitters, they're always trying to learn pitchers. So we can't let you film the paper. I see what you're trying to do there, and you're not allowed to film the words on the paper. <laughs> College coaches first started noticing me. I had this amazing game when I was like in seventh grade. Um, it was in a qualify nationals qualifier, and I, I think I had like 20 strikeouts and I got my very first recruitment letter. What a bummer that uh, we didn't get Monica Abbott. Ouch! God, that hurt. Uh, when we recruited Monica, it is a perfect story about a student athlete, a family, trying to find the right fit. Even though we didn't get Monica, I think what I'll always appreciate about her was her painfully honest communication that she had with our program and it came down to this, it's not a fit. I committed late, I com committed to Tennessee in November of my senior year of high school. She went to Tennessee in a program that was positioned to really promote how good they were. I can't think of a program at the time that was better positioned to do that because their university had done so much to be able to promote softball and put her front and center the minute she came to campus. I think it was one of the best decisions I've made. And I went there because I knew the program, the softball program, was right where it needed to be. It just needed a couple of contributing players to really push through. Tennessee is a sports school, big time sports school, so I really loved that. And also I knew um, I could go and make a difference there. I could help establish a program and help build a tradition of excellence. My four years at Tennessee were amazing, awesome, but they were really hard too. She got in the cooker very quickly by going to University of Tennessee. She could have gone to a smaller school and just rewritten the record books completely, but would she end up being where she is today? We went to the College World Series three times. Uh, we went to Oklahoma City three times. We made regionals. I guess four times. Single season strikeout record, we, that was probably one of the coolest memories I have from college, uh, just personal athletic memories from college because we were playing at home, we were in the game, it was crazy. I actually tied the record and, on the game before, you know, if I had only got one more strikeout and it was a, an away game that I tied it and we were playing the University of Alabama at home for the SEC championship. I remember that there was fans driving up to the stadium. There was fans lined up and down the main street of our campus to get into that softball game. And we were sold out. There was people, we had a freeway above our field and people were standing on the freeway to watch the game. And I just needed one strikeout. Um, I got it in the first inning and we went on to win that game. And, clinch the um, SEC championship. But it was such an incredible moment to see, uh, see that much support from the University of Tennessee and from the volunteer faithful and how much they believed in the softball program and came out to witness that little small piece of history. She learned an awful lot about competing at such a high level. And yet, despite all those accolades, she rewrote the record books at Tennessee. She rewrote the record books in NC2A softball. The last moments of my college career at Tennessee, we were in Oklahoma City in the Women's College World Series and we were in the national championship game. And it was a hard fought battle. We were playing Arizona and we were actually losing the game at that point. And there was kind of this, just this sense of just kind of like 
sadness a little bit of, oh gosh, it's over. Like, is it over already? And also, I remember looking at my catcher, Shannon Depp King, and thinking like, I can't believe we've made it this far, all the way to the championship game, and how well we had done. But there was also like this bittersweetness of like, gosh, it's over. I'm not ready for it to be over yet. Let's freaking go. L-E-T-S, Gio, let's go, let's go, L-E-T-S, Gio. Monica Abbott brings a lot to our team. She's almost like having another coach. Um, at first coming in, uh, the other teammates didn't really know how to take her. It's almost like she was barking a little bit, but then they understood that she is a competitor at all levels and wants to win and is just trying to help the ball club. So they took to her pretty quick and it's, it's been really good ever since. Monica has a pitcher, uh, crafty. You know, she's a veteran. She's uh, very competitive. You know, surprisingly uh, to that level of competitiveness. But that's what you expect from that elite level type pitcher. So um, I like her competitive. That's one thing that that really sets her apart. I think from others that I've that I've seen, you know, up close and personal like that. Um, infielders uh, feel the grass kind of skipping a little, um, so know that offensively and defensively. If you hit a smoke one on the ground, it's going to skip, all right? so don't give up on it. Just think it's an easy ground ball. Um, a lot of foul ground, so heads up. you got a tarp over here, first and second, but still a lot of room to run, so don't give up on the balls until you actually see them, see them hitting around. Was the outfield fast? Yes. yes. It's fast off the dirt. Yeah, yeah, it's the grass. On the base. I was waiting to see if it was like a lip, and there's not, but it just... It's just very it scoots really fast. It's yeah. running purposes. On the bases, be ready to take extra spaces on the big foul territory, guys. It's a long throw from everywhere. Long throw. Right. Right. One, two, three. Game time, big dogs! Woo! I don't know. Yeah, that was good. Look at him. After my college career ended, I picked up with Team USA right away. And then I was drafted by the Washington Glory. And I went on to compete with them in the National Pro Fast Pitch League that summer and I split time between Team USA and the Glory uh, following my senior season. It was great, the Team USA, we were kind of on a mission at that, that year, it was the year before the 2008 Olympics, and we were starting to prepare. You could see it in the coaches and in the staff and everyone just starting to get excited about the upcoming Olympic Games. Olympic opening ceremonies. They have got to be one of the most incredible experiences of all time. Just the amount of time and effort the country's put into putting on a show uh, for the world. Team USA, we kind of like all the countries, we all line up and they funnel us through to walk into the stadium. Team USA was right in the tunnel and we're kind of like looking at each other and you're standing next to, you know, Natasha Watley, your, your teammate, and then you're also standing next to LeBron James and Michael Phelps and all these great athletes and everyone has the same look on their face. Everyone turns back into that 12 year old kid that started playing softball, that started pitching, that started swimming, that started playing basketball. And everyone is super excited and there's this huge, huge patriotism and we started the USA chant. They announced us over the loudspeaker and everyone went out and it was the biggest rush and most exciting thing ever. I'll never forget that moment ever.
as far as the political aspects for softball, that was more always prevalent throughout the entire games in the past past year. I remember softball being voted out of the 2012 Olympics and it was devastating. It was before the 2008 Olympic team had even been named and so it definitely gave more motivation for the younger kids to really step up. People like myself and Caitlin Lowe and Andrea Duran to really step up so that we could have an opportunity to compete at the Olympics. But it was it was crazy. Every every time we played a game, every stop we made, it was the topic of conversation. And why softball? The 2008 championship game, the gold medal game at the Olympics. I remember how intense everyone was, especially the hitters. I feel like people like Jessica Mendoza and Crystal Bustos and Natasha Watley, just how intense they were in their prep and how there was just almost this sense of calmness before the game, an anticipation of, are we ready? Are we going to do well? Um, we were facing Yukiko Ueno. She's one of, one of the best pitchers in the world. Uh, and it was, Kat was starting, Kat Osterman was starting. And there was this moment of just such togetherness and bond that I'll never forget where everyone kind of, you go into war and into battle, not only as a team, but as a country at that moment. It was a cool, a cool feeling and it didn't go our way. I was in Beijing as a fan watching us compete. And I always had such empathy for every player and every coach that how do you come back to America and be disgusted by silver? And then no opportunity for the Olympic team to redeem themselves in four years. It's the ultimate punishment that you fell short of your own standard and you don't have an opportunity to redeem yourself. But I, don't, I remember we never didn't think that we were gonna win that game. We never didn't think that we were going to come back and win. Um, in the end, we ran out of time. After the Olympics, I kind of had like this moment of like, now what? <laughs> There's just like kind of this lull of, what am I going to do now? Like, I just pretty much thought that would be the end of everything. And there was just this sense of what, what now? What am I going to do now? Nolan Ryan was the first million dollar athlete in the MLB. It's only a matter of time before there's a million dollar athlete in women's sports and especially in softball. The question isn't when it's going to be because it's going to happen. The question is who is it going to be. And guess what? She's probably the best pitcher on the planet. It was on Cinco de Mayo and we laughed like, okay, it's Cinco de Mayo who's going to be listening and the world listened.